All right, we are live, live discussion time. Uh, we just uh, took a, a quick review look at the uh, Royal Lotnagar 12 Game of Thrones series. Uh, and like I said, it's pretty much um, the same as the uh, Royal Lotnagar 12 uh, regular distillery release. Uh, it's Diageo um, product. And um, we'll give a couple minutes for people to join up to ask some questions. But the... Um, not a letdown, but not a, you know, didn't like uh, surprise me. We'll say, put it that way, but it's not a bad dram. I'm going to definitely make me a big pour now to uh, get the uh, ball rolling here. Let's see how that goes. I got the headset on because, uh, I got my to have uh, Malt Muser join me here as well. Lightness, good to see you. Wow, it's been a while, man. How have you been? Have you been okay? I'm not sure if you uh, changed jobs or changed shifts or uh, what the deal was there, but I haven't seen you in ages, man. Hopefully you're doing well. Have you uh, had this one uh, or the regular uh, Roll Lightnagar 12? Either one, it's, I think it's the same juice anyway. Uh, have you had this one? Um, if not, have you had any roll out in the gar uh, at all? And uh, what are you drinking tonight, uh, Lotness? Just, just curious. Hey, Daniel, good to see you, man. I think we have around 20 people from all coming over. Oh, wow. He was an awesome hype man. Oh, man. Now, now you got me, uh, now you got me under, under the uh, microscope. <laughs> That's good, though. That's fine. I appreciate uh, his, uh, his help. And I got to get his link ready for uh, an invite, too. I'm glad you remind me of that so I can go ahead and send it and get him in the uh, the deal. One second here. Uh, send. That should work. Well, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll tell him when I see him. Richard Blanc, it's good to see you, man. Uh, cheer, brothers. Uh, let's see. Last show was epic. Wow, Stash City. <laughs> Yeah, oh man, what was the, the last one was with um, was it, it was with Malt? We were well, which one were we? Oh, the uh, Glenlivet the eighteen uh, show, I think it was. Yeah, that's weird how they changed that up. I, I was not too happy about the um, the darn forty three percent to forty percent ABV difference. Uh, I did like the old eighteen a little bit better uh, because of that. I think. But uh, it's still a decent, you know, 18-year-old dram for the price that you can get it for. But uh, Daniel's going with the French Oak uh, Blacones uh, single malt tonight. Nice. French Oak. Um, the only other French Oak I can think of is the Glenlivet 15, I think, is a French Oak. I'm trying to remember any other French Oaks out there, Daniel, that you can think of. Uh, Lotness says he hasn't had any of the... the the roll out in the cars. Okay. Um, if you can find it, like I said, around 55, 60, I think it's uh, worth it. And you can find these bottles actually as cheap as uh, 45 that I saw. Um, so that's the good news. Decent 12. Good choice. Jason agrees. <laughs> the 12, which uh, is that the PX or is that a Oloroso? Which uh, cask uh, maturation is that? I'm just curious. Or if it's all in the. Uh, bourbon like the whole time i know the 18 that's the one i've i'm familiar with is bourbon pretty much straightforward i do like it a lot though um i do like the 21 oloroso but i even like the 10 px decent even more i don't know why i guess it's kind of like pete the liveliness of the sherry at a younger age with if it's px maybe it makes a difference i don't i don't know why that is santa cruz man it's been a while since i've seen you too hopefully you've been doing well um same with uh, Lightness. Uh, I haven't seen you guys in a while, so definitely welcome to the channel. Dream dude, good to see you from California, man. What are you sipping? Uh, have you, and let me know in the channel if you, anyone's ever had a Royal Lotnagar 12, what you thought about it. If it wasn't this one, did you have an independent bottle and was it good? Or have you had the selected reserve old bottle that you see? Sometimes it's another distillery bottle, but that's only two they have is the Royal Lotnagar 12 and the selected reserve that I could find. Couldn't find uh, anything. Um, else really too slow nice to nice to meet you um trying to catch up wow chris beaton good to see you wow it's been a while i think i've seen multi golfer i think might be new glen scotia 15 that's a great bottle uh that's a good one that's one of my favorites yay uh good to see you there malt user i uh, just did a pre-show 
happy hour with friends. Oh, cool. I appreciate it. I sent you a link Mal, to uh, join me. If you're interested, I'll uh, keep an eye out of the corner of my left eye here and uh, pop you in when I see you join. Yes, Glen Levitt 15 is the first that comes to mind, but there are several more. And again, it's with the Golden Promise, Barley, like Glen Gloin and McKellen. Okay. Hmm. I'm trying to think of, yeah, I think I might have heard of Glen Gloin having a French oak at some point. Like, a, I can't remember if it's a, if it was like a uh, teapot, tawny port type of thing or what it was, but it sounds a bit familiar nothing still finishing them from work oh that's right but my junior big hey uh dram have you ever had the brolot uh do you like it uh have you had the 12 let me know what you think about the that at all uh if i haven't if i already asked you i apologize i'm kind of just going in line here um break into that spring bank right over your right shoulder top shelf <laughs> that is uh long gone man that one's uh the 19 port uh cask 19 year port cask and it was good one of my actually first high-end scotches i ever bought um and it ran like 290 it was it was almost 300 but well worth it it's only 300 bottles in the series uh got really lucky picking that one up and uh i remember the notes being all over the place extremely complex and and it all made sense thankfully in the end uh, so I do pop into spring banks a lot. So keep your eyes on the channel. I uh, get new stuff all the time. I'm expecting a new Bunahavan Ankladak and a, um, a Kalila 18 uh, peated. I'm expecting those two uh, pretty soon. So keep your eyes out if you're fans of either one of those guys as well. Uh, good evening, everybody. Andrew Page, nice to see you. Guys popped in here from Mount Muser drinking. Uh, look for carriages, triple wood, cast strength. Oh, man, that's like the... One of the best carriages, I think. Uh, it took me a little bit to warm up to it. I think, like you know, when I got past the neck pour, I was then I got really into it, especially towards the 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 end. It got better as I got deeper into the bottle. That's for sure. Uh, really like that one, Rob Klonstra. Good to see him in. Oh wow. Um, just uh, saying, Bob Cohen is Glen Coyne, and McCallan used the Golden Promise Barley. Not that Glen Coyne has a drink. Oh, okay, gotcha. Golden Promise Barley. Okay. Huh. I've, I've heard of, like, Port um, Ellen and um, who else? Like, Kilhoman uses, like, some of that uh, local barley, um, that type of barley. I'm not familiar with the Golden uh, Promise. I'll have to look more into that. I do like a Glen Coyne, even though I don't like the, the, the thin mouth coat. I do appreciate the uh, thing. So let me uh, pop in the malt here and uh, let's see. Hey, how, Alex, you doing? how you doing, buddy? Pretty good. How about you? Well, let me I'm think. doing great, man. I'm doing great. Yeah. I always screw up the views. <laughs> I forget to hit it as soon as I have someone join. Yeah, it's part of the thing, man. It's uh, the thing's kind of annoying. Yeah, good to see you, man. You You're coming to tradition. I even uh, I just did a little uh, uh, happy hour on my channel, a pre pre telex happy hour, and uh, sent a bunch of folks over. It looks like a couple of them are here already, which is awesome. Andrew and Malty and stuff. Yeah, man. We we figured we would uh, have a couple of drinks while we waited for your. Uh, your royal arrival with your <laughs> royal Lochner, right? <laughs> oh my! Good to see you, man. How are you? You too. You too. It hasn't been uh, too long. Uh, yeah, I like to make this a weekly thing with you. Definitely the. Uh, yeah, if this was. It'd be fun, man. Could, this was could... a. No, go ahead. Go for it. Oh no, I was saying. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if our schedules align, we could definitely keep doing this. I think we've been on the last, you know, a couple, a couple Tuesdays of late. We might as well, uh, you know, it's fun. I hear you. Especially in the COVID world, right? Ain't nothing else. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, work has been crazy, actually. I'm, I'm surprised at how busy it's been, but I work for the government, so you know how that goes. <laughs> it's like just doing our job, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, government. yeah, for sure, for sure, man. I have no complaints, but it's uh, it's getting cr pretty crazy out there. But hopefully, uh, things get better soon. Uh, I, I've been waiting for this one order. I ordered it, like, in early April, and it's, I think a UPS got it from overseas, like, on the 7th or 8th. And they haven't done anything since the eighth when they got it, and I'm kind of thinking I better send them a, a question tomorrow or I call them up and say, "Hey, where, where's my whiskey?" <laughs> oh shit! What did you order? Just a couple bottles of a, 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 um, a Bunahaven Ankladak, which is a travel retail exclusive. Yeah, yeah. 
it's a one liter and then um never had it either so i'm kind of curious to see if, how good it is i've heard decent reviews on it um the other one was the clayla 18 peated version from the distillery Ooh, yeah so that should one. be pretty good too what about you what are you sipping on yeah so started with a little glendronic 12 tonight i was just having a couple of those um i am doing the uh glen 15 right now nice but, um what i what i'm going to get into next is something i did live last week which i know you're going to love Oh, the Anak 24, the yeah. Anak 24. You probably see and that bottle right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I remember you were a big fan, and I definitely enjoy it. So I got that, and then I got a couple of Peteds to take it home, Port Charlotte 10, and then I got a Ooh, Mocker see, Bay. See, that's what I need. I need that PC 10. This is the uh, Mocker Bay at cast strength. So this is a – this is a – let me take a look. This is – 58%. Yeah. See, that's that's one of the rare ones I don't have. I do have a vintage, a 2008 vintage bottle that's blue, but I don't have any of the, uh, the Mockier Bay ones. I'll have to dig one out. <laughs> yeah, this Mockier Bay cast strength is like, it's amazing. It's exactly what you'd expect. It sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, it's a fantastic pour for sure. You know, it's funny you bring that up because I actually have some things on order that I'm waiting for too, which I think might excite you and I'll hopefully be getting in the next week. So I have a um, a hand a hand poured from the distillery Bunahaven Warehouse Nine Ten Year Old Manzalina cask. Oh yeah, um, I got a a Highland Park Twenty One and a Glengoyne Teapot Dram. Oh man, <laughs> which I'm really looking forward to. It's the Batch Seven, which I think is their newest one. But yeah, man, uh, you know, not much else to do these days, so. Checking out, checking out new drams as much as I can. <laughs> no, I hear you. That teapot's going to be awesome. I was lucky enough not to, I haven't had a recent batch. I, I think it was last year's or the year before. It actually, it was probably a couple of years ago uh, when I was visiting KB up in New York. They had a, he had a, a teapot. I think dram left and got a little sip of that. And I think you'll be happy. I haven't got my own bottle, so you're lucky to get one. <laughs> the other one, um, trying to think of what the other one was. The um, what was the only one you just mentioned before that? Um, Highland Park 21. Oh, wow. And, and then it's a Bunahaven. It's a 10-year-old uh, Manzanilla cask. It's uh, it's like 55%. It's Yeah, it's one of these like 200 mil bottles that they pour, they hand pour at the distillery type situations. Oh, and the other thing is the Lafroy Karches 15. Mm. Have you seen that before? Yeah, that, if it was my first short review. If you... Um... When I when I had that long break for about three or four months and I, I came back, I thought, you know, I'm going to start doing short reviews and I'm going to do long reviews. And um, I was lucky enough to find a bottle of it because I looked for I looked for that for like a year and a half when it first came out. Uh, since we're not the Friends of Lafroy doesn't do like Ardbeg does where you get their committee releases right. easily over here. For some reason, the Friends of Lafroy never get their bottles over here. So you have to order them overseas. And I got lucky. Yeah. To find one. So definitely check out the short review after you do yours. Oh, and I will for sure. Let me know if you thought it was a lot different or about the same or what well, you thought. And like, to be honest, Alex, I didn't know it existed. Because I, I didn't saw that they had, a while, 20, yeah. they had that 2015 Karchis. And then they released, or they had the twentieth, the two hundredth anniversary year, where Lafroy released a fifteen-year-old two hundredth anniversary release. But what they also did, and what I didn't realize, is they released a fifteen-year-old Karches. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, this guy over here. It's this guy over here. Let me see if I can just get the bottle uh, can at least for you. It's um. Yep, that's the one. It's a. Uh, it is, and the, and the interesting thing is, and I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I think it's it's what I like about the carriages ser series is I never have one that's anything like the other. They're always like a, a pleasant surprise, yeah. and um, it's uh, it's a lot different than the carriages series that you're probably used to because, uh, as you know, they're usually like a really high ABV. This one is uh, yeah, forty three percent. Yeah, 43%. So that part might throw you a bit, but you just got to keep in mind the age is what really makes it a little right. special. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're, you're right. I didn't even know about it until um, I luckily just saw a, 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 tw a tweet from uh, John Campbell, I think it is, that's over there. I can't remember their main guy. Yeah, John Campbell. Yeah. The, uh, 
I saw it pop up, and they never advertised it over here, and it was only no. available in Europe. So that's yeah, it's only a UK, yeah. That's we never even knew about it. It was only a UK thing. Yeah, I noticed that too. Um, but boy, I'm uh, Telex. So uh, one thing I'll share with you quick, and I think you'll appreciate. Um, last Friday, I had uh, booze dancing, Malta Montreal. I think joined. I did basically a little anok tasting. 12, 18, 24. So I got the 24 finally recently. And let me tell you, this thing is one of the best deals in whiskey you can find, man. This I got this for 200. Oh, wow. Like That's a lot. Like 200 bucks. It, it, I'm not, it was even less. It was 197. Oh, wow. Because I think mine was two. It was at least 225, if not 250. I, I I that was a great they, price. I don't understand how they can get away with it. I like, think they're the changing their mind. Yeah, they. Damn it. I, th I think they're changing their line soon. Don't quote me on that. The best person to ask is Steph. Uh, Steph Bridgeway. Do you know that name? Mm -mm. She. Uh, if she's hung out with the Scotch for Dummies every, every once in a while, and she does like a. She's like in the Tybev team, and she does like the Anok, the Old Pulteney, the Spayburn, and the. Um, I'm missing one. Bob Blair. And uh, Bob Blair. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. They all changed. Change. So since Bob Blair and since Old Pulteney recently changed our line, I'm wondering if Spayburn and and, um, and um, Enoch might be next. I hope not on the high-end stuff because, yeah, like you said, what do you think about the 18? I never had that one. Is that pretty good too? Sorry, I caught um, you in mid-sip. <laughs> So first and foremost, <laughs> I hope they don't change this because a knock 24 at this price is criminal. I would buy every bottle you could find. <laughs> you know, I'm probably going to get another right away. This was seems amazing. So the 18, I thought, was the most challenging of the 12, 18, and 24. It's It was a little edgy. It had a little bit more punch. It was... Um, yeah, there was a there was a much more noticeable alcohol note. There was definitely, you know, they all had that kind of same heavy mouthfeel. That kind of, I think, I think uh, Malted in Montreal said it best. He was like, "It's like a limestone. It's like oh, the wow. wet stone minerality thing to to a knock." But was I will there, say this: Was there any uh, like woody properties to the? 18? Yeah, yeah. I the eighteen is the one I think like I think is the best purchase out of the line, considering it's a hundred bucks. Oh wow! <laughs> and you can get it for like such a good price. I think the twenty four is the best whiskey, um, but the eighteen is really, really good. And um, I think it's just going to be with oxidization is going to really work its magic. I think you're right. It, it, it and that's a scary thing. Is it's a good price now, but if you said that eighteen is for like a hundred bucks, man, I would be really surprised if that lasts much longer. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, this twenty four was a sub two hundred, man. That's what makes me happen. Because when I got it for two twenty or two fifty, I thought that was a steal, and yeah. to even get it lower it than is. that, that is, that's still a steal. I mean, tell me another distillery that puts out a, a good distillery. I'm not talking about Grange Stone, right? I'm not talking right. about. I mean, tell me another distillery that puts out a twenty four, twenty five year old whiskey that's less than three hundred bucks. You, you can't oh. really. It's it's exactly right. The um, the Delmores won't be selling any of their. Uh, Eight, they're eighteen is two hundred thirty dollars. So there you go. You're getting the eighteen for a twenty four year old whiskey for an eighteen on the high end price. So mm -hmm. You can't complain with that. Right. Good to see you, Stephen Connor. I didn't even catch you there until a little earlier. Um, nice to see you, man. Hopefully you're having a good deal and sipping something good. He he hosted a little tasting um, not so long ago and got to have some really good stuff on the side uh, on the uh, on a blind. So I really appreciate. Uh, that as well yeah right on Stephen connor i think we've got to uh know each other a bit through the chats over the last couple of weeks and uh i think Stephen came on a live was it my live or somebody else's i don't even remember but we got to see your uh expansive glendronic collection which was uh the stuff of dreams <laughs> oh yeah that was a funny thing he threw me for a loop because um one of the drams that we tasted it was it was very oloroso driven it was very good sherry you could tell it was it felt older and i could you know my first 
guess was definitely either Glendronic, maybe McCallan, if not a Glendronic. And uh, it ended up being some, um, I'm trying to think, it wasn't, it was uh, the Glenn Farkless Family Cast series, which is a really oh, good yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. I've never had any of those, yeah. It's a good line, but it wasn't on. It, it wasn't too crazy expensive. It was one of the you know lower lower uh, year ones, I think, it, uh, at some point in the. Um, I was surprised that it it would have. I, I took it for maybe even being the Kilkerian fifteen Oloroso um, that I had. That's how good it was. I was surprised at how well it turned out. Uh, I have not had the Kilkerian the Kilkerian Oloroso yet. Actually, Telex that reminds me of something. Um, so let me throw out a hypothetical to you and maybe some people in the chat can chime in on this. You have a choice between two bottles, okay. Ardbeg, Ardbog for 300, Glen Goyne 25 for 329. Which way do you go? Oh man. Ardbeg, Ardbog for 300, the Glen Goyne 24 for how much? 329. Now I understand there are like bipolar whiskey. I mean they're very different, but it's the price point and I love both of their styles immensely. Which way would you go? Yeah, see you're I do like Glen Goyne's taste. I just I'm just not really into the thin mouthfeel as much. And that's why I'm kind of leaning towards the Ardbog. But on the other hand, and, and Ardbog has probably got some very old older i would say juice like 15 to 17 year i think is at least in it mm. some younger stuff it because it, it does have a really good pd uh the ardbog is is reminiscent of it's the same cast the mazzania cast you're talking about yeah it's a uh, it's dry but yet like almost like a fine red wine so it's it's it is it's nice. It melts with the peat well. It's kind of like a one of those chocolatey, real uh, purple fruit covered. Uh, what do you call those things? Raisinets kind of thing, but with dark chocolate instead of milk chocolate. Oh man, you got me going. <laughs> but the I've like, never had the Ardbeg, and I've I yearn for one of those old Ardbegs. Like I mean, I got into Ardbeg in 2015, so like I haven't had anything that was very old. And 300 seems like a lot for an NAS. But I've heard Ardbog is like one of the best Ardbegs that's been released. And so I'm like tempted, but I'm yeah. also really tempted by, a, I mean, Glen Goyne. I love Glen Goyne. The Glen Goyne 25 is 48%, which is what makes my eyes perk up. Because that 21 year is like yeah. 43. And I'm like, uh. so yeah, I'm, I'm stuck, man. I got, I, got a, I got a little bit of extra capital in my pocket for once, and I'm, it's burning a hole in my pocket. I don't know which way to go. Is it the 24 or 25, Glen Goyne? 25. 25, okay. I, if it was me, uh, for, for the price, and the, the Ardbog um, is good, even at second. I know it's it's painful because the secondary market, but 300 is about what I would have to pay in D.C. As I know a place that still actually has a bottle, uh, so believe it or not, that I could uh, probably pick up at uh, down in downtown area, but it's one of those secondary 12th, 12th and uh, what is that? 12th and L by chance? That, it's, that the, it's the guy that's Indian that has I know a, who you're talking about. Yeah. The big store and, and he's got all this stuff. And that's the thing. It's like he's selling it reasonably, but it is secondary market prices. So it, it's kind of painful because I'm not, but it'd be, just the same as if I ordered it overseas and paid an auction price, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I think I paid something close to that in pounds. I think it was like two sixty after everything was said and done, maybe two six seventy seventy something like that. So, I, I I think it's reasonable. I would probably go for the Ardbug only for the fact that it's harder to find, yeah. and you could, you could get a Glen Goyne twenty five. Mm -hmm. Whenever. Three years from now, most likely, I would yeah. think. But the Ardbog will only be barely available for, you know, unless you're really lucky like I am and could find, you know, just find it on the shelf somewhere by luck. But it never happens. It's the only place I've ever seen on the shelf is that Indian store that's down in the middle of D.C. I think it's like ben Benny's or Benahan. I know, I, yeah, I know exactly which one you're talking about, yeah. I can't remember um, the name, but he's got the super. The one I'm thinking of is a Glenn, it's a Glenn Glassaw signatory 20 year cast strength for like 240. Well, that one's also on my radar. Ooh, 
now the, no. the that Glenn Glass uh, go whatever however you say it that that one I I do love the um, the Torfa which is the Peter yeah the Torfa is the Peter one yeah yeah I do love that I did not like the uh, revival all that much and that's the one people usually gravitate towards so I guess it really depends on your profile. Cena Cruz and says get them both man so I would <laughs> get them both but I just splurged on a Highland Park twenty one I found a Highland Park twenty one for two thirty so I had to get it. Steven says he can get the Ardbog for about two fifty or less, but I, I know he's in Tennessee, so that might be the reason why. But don't quote me on it. Um, yeah, because you know people, like a lot of folks. Goes, yeah, I mean it's it's clearly the price is driven by like exclusivity and the Ardbog Ardbag homerism and whatever. But I'm seeing a good amount of uh, conversation about this. So this is good. Dram dude, Eagle Rare. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Graham, dude, you're great. Chris Beaton, too, man. I, I don't know if I know you two, man. Good to see you guys. Cheers. Don't pour the Eagle Rare, man. Come on. Sick oh, they're all Eagle Rare. Well, is it an Eagle Rare 17 year old B Tech? <laughs> I mean, I I'll tell you this much. I, I'm like, the bottom line is 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 the Glen going 25 going to match up to this? And knock 24 because if it doesn't, I might as well just get another one of these. Yeah, I, I, I they're probably pretty similar. I mean, I, w- I would guess because I did like the mm-hmm. knock 24, and I'm pretty picky when it comes to the, especially if I'm spending over you know a hundred dollars on a whiskey, it's like it better really wow me. <laughs> What's the most expensive bottle you ever bought? Oh man, I'm trying to think, probably. Trying to think, I'm thinking that I personally bought um, on the uh, just price wise was probably that that uh, Ardbeg Trevana that I haven't opened yet. It's a 19 year old uh, Ardbeg Trevon that's uh, that's like from last bucks, year. Right? It was a, yeah, it was a few hundred dollars to me. That was my kind of like my limit. I don't, I never went above that. My wife would probably kill me. <laughs> yeah, I've never went above three. Like, I, I've only rarely went above three and when i did it was only because of it was a deal i got i'm trying to think i bought so i have, a, I have five bottles that i paid over three for two of them are um lafroy 25s which i got for 320 a piece and then that's three an of them three of them are brook lottie black art 4.1s which i bought for 330 a piece but that's it yeah nothing <laughs> else and there's nothing else i've even I, I just can't do it. And that's why I'm like looking at this. So the Glen, the Highland Park 21 is like 300 in the US. I found it for way cheaper, luckily, but that was the one where I wasn't sure. But yeah, man, like I'm looking at this art bog and I know I can't find it. And I'm like, damn, I want this. And then I'm looking at this uh, Glen going 25 and I'm like, damn, I want this. And, and I've got to tell you, when I was in DC and saw it, I, it, that was a, like a few years ago. So it might be long gone by now, too. This was a long time ago. So you know yeah. what I mean? It's like a, he he could have sold that like ne- the week after I saw it because there was a whiskey expo going on in DC when I did see it. So he probably sold a bunch of old school because uh, he had like a, a supernova from like 2005 in there. And he had like a, oh, shit. not five, but 2015, I want to say. He had like the, a couple of years of those and he had some some pretty nice uh, secondary stuff but dc is like really easy to get stuff shipped in and out of there oh, so yeah they're super liberal about it yeah that's i think that's the only reason why you can because you can never find like an art bog and sitting in maryland anywhere that's for sure <laughs> uh, <probably laughs> you're not, you're not, you know there's some store some dusty store somewhere where they got it sitting there nobody bought it and they got it priced for like 78 bucks do you miss that? Like in Pennsylvania, they have no have they have the state run stores, and they don't really have any other options, do they, for purchasing locally? Uh, let me tell you something, Telix. When I moved here, because you know, a uh, little bit of background for the folks in the chat. Uh, Telix and I met because we both lived in the District of Columbia. We were both reviewers on Distiller.com, and uh, we got into chats and all of this. Um, I. When I moved to PA, I was like, shit, it's all government-run stores. Yeah. I will tell you this. They do have good prices for a lot of things, but they do have limited bottles. But let me tell you, in D.C., you could get any – anybody would ship to you because it's, like, super liberal. Uh, 
even though this is government source, I got a list. I got a short list of probably 20 shops that still send stuff to me. Oh, nice. Okay. And it's not just because it's me. It's not just because it's me. It's literally like they'll just ship to Pennsylvania regardless. Right. So I, I order from them, but that's where I found this art bog, which will ship for, you know, 310 in, you know, with shipping. And then the Glen going 25 is I found for with shipping. It's about 340. So I'm, I'm debating between that art bog and the Glen going. Cause like I said, I'm, I'm uh, in the mood for something special. I can't get both because I just bought that Highland Park 21. <laughs> yeah, that that alone. Is that like a distillery bottle, a new one? No. So here's what I know about Highland Park 21. They, they used to be something that was regular release. You could get it for, it was a 47.5% bottle. Okay. They went away with it for a while. They re-released it in 2019, but it's only in Europe as far as I understand. Oh. You can find it in some places in the U.S. and it's uh, 46%. And it's like six different barrels, uh, sherry punchins and whatever that they mix into it. It's supposedly still really good. I don't know if it's as good as the old one, but I had to buy it. Oh, Um, yeah. 21-year-old Highland Park. I I mean, 21. (laughs) Well, and the thing is, is where I found it in the States, the Highland Park 21 was like 330, 350 bucks. I found it at this place for 230 and change. So I was like, I got to get it. I had to pull it. I can imagine. But yeah, that. man, I've, I've been getting some older stuff lately. Um, and yeah, you know, the Anoc 24 being one of them. But yeah, so that's where I'm kind of at. I, I don't well, know. I'm leaning, on, I'm leaning towards the art blog, man. Well, I'm glad you ended up liking the um, the new uh, Anoc 24 for you better than the Glenn Farkless 25 because I could tell that was a bit of a letdown. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's night and day. Night and day. I That's amazing that. the difference. I'm so, I'm trying. I mean, I had a decent experience with it, but I think you're right. I don't think I liked it near as much as the NR24 when I even. In uh, in a, a Farkless 25 was one of my first 25 that type of caliber year wise whiskey. So maybe that's why I was, it's funny. Cause you, when you first have something like, I remember when I first had the Bowmore darkest 15 from uh, is one of my first Isla Scotch is I thought it was, you know, really good. And it, it's decent. But once you have a lot of others and you go back to it, it's like, oh my, what, what did I really see in this? That was so great to begin with. Yeah. Um, so I had a similar experience. The Glenn Farkless 25 was the first 25 I ever had. And even then, I remember being like, wow, 25-year-old whiskeys aren't that much better. It was just like, it was good. Like, yeah. It was good. Uh, but it wasn't like mind-blowing. And then I remember having, you know, some other, so, you know, up, you know, 20-year-old or like, you know, Brooklady Black Art. I had the um, Talisker. I mean, even the Talisker 18. Some of the 18s, I was like, well, these are way better than this Glenn Farkless 25. <laughs> And I think the thing about um, the Glenn Farkless 25 and what I learned later is that like they use like a really tired cast in it. And like, dude, I let that thing sit for nine months and I went back to it. And I was just like, eh. They're keeping is this all the good a $200 stuff. dollar bottle? No. Like, it's just not. I, I don't know. They're keeping all the good stuff for the family casks, I think. Right. I have a Ball Blair. I have a Ball Blair 1990, which is the 25, which is just blows that Glenn Farkless yeah. out of the water. And it was like, that was that was the second one I got actually, and I remember oh. once I got that I was like, "Yeah, this is ridiculous." But- nineteen ninety, man. That if I, I would, I wish I had a way to buy one of those because I uh, I had the ninety nine back here uh, that I went through pretty quickly, but the uh, uh, ninety nine was good. The ninety and the eighty three, man. Those two are like just insanely. Yeah, that eighty three. That eighty three. I've never been able to find, but, but yeah. So like, I'm looking forward to this new Highland Park. Like, I know it's it's it comes in their new vikingish bottle so i don't know if it's going to be a mind-blowing pour but 21 year old highland park for 230 i'll i'll roll the dice i i i like the 18 i didn't love it i know a lot of people love the 18 i liked it enough i just love i love highland park style and so i'm thinking about like eh compared to u.s prices i'm gonna roll the dice on this highland park see what happens so it'll be a little treat have you tried the Twisted Tattoo 16 year by them? I haven't, but I've, you, I've been thinking you, about it. If you see that, I would pick it up because I think it would, since you're not a big fan of the 18, it would be a good try if, if you're into vanilla and fruit. Do you like vanilla, heavy vanilla? Sure do. 
I think you'll really like that one because it was vanilla was the first note I got and fruit like big time ruby red fruits uh, all over the place. Definitely a, a lighter dram than I expected as far as like the color, but I think it's it's not colored or chill filtered or you know. And for ninety nine bucks for a hundred bucks, I mean sixteen year whiskey. It's I think it's a pretty good deal actually. Yeah, I just saw D.H. Silves in the house, man. What's up, man? He mentioned that he's seen the Highland Park 21 in the U.S. and you can get the 750 mil. Yeah, I've seen it in the U.S., but it's like 330, 350 bucks everywhere I've seen it. And so I the only reason I bought it was because I found it at this place that sells it for, um, I mean, it was 230 so like that was that was the reason I bought it. Otherwise, like I was on the fence, right? I wanted. I'm like, I did like I like the 18, but it's it's not the mind blowing whiskey that a lot of folks did. And so I thought, eh, I'll give it a try on this 21. See what happens. Was yeah. it the, was okay. it the was it the old 18, like the 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 non Viking one, or was it the Viking 18? Or do no, you... it was the Viking. But okay, yeah, it was the Viking. But I'm not sure, like. I haven't seen anybody do a review or a comparison of the 18s. I wish they did because I'm surprised that you didn't like that the the old version at least. Well, I, it, it but, ain't that I didn't like it. I definitely liked it. But it, I mean, you and I coming from off the uh, distiller, like distiller has that as ranked as their best whiskey. Yeah. And I, I was mean, like, just anything. so like when I first saw that one, I didn't know shit. I was like, is this really? This must be where it's at. And it's good but i couldn't say that it was that much better or like it didn't it wasn't as good as like the buna 18 to me or even the well talisker 18. yeah um, i see what you're saying i mean it, it, i think it depends on my mood that i'm in if i want like a, a tropical um fruit mm -hmm. florally kind of dram it it's it's tough because at the time the eighteen was like one thirty. I'm not sure what it's selling for now, but for the eighteen for one thirty, it was really well priced. Maybe that's I'm not sure if the distiller takes into account like the prices on whiskey at all when they do their ratings. I don't know if they do either. I mean, the thing that I picked up about the Talus or the Highland Park eighteen was that I just didn't get a lot of the dried as much of the dried fruit notes as I expected. And and what I've kind of learned is like. And this is especially attributable to NASs. It's like when you don't know the age, and it's like a, especially something that's influenced by sherry. If it's a lot of like fresh fruit, bright fruit, that's usually not always, but usually more associated with younger stuff. When you start getting the dried fruit notes, because it's been oxidizing, right? It's oxidizing in the bottle, even though the bottle is closed. It's still oxidizing to some degree. Like you're breaking down those compounds. You start those fresh fruits go to dry fruit, and so with an NAS. I mean, this is even attributable to like, not just necessarily fruit, but when you start getting those drier aged notes, that's when you know that like, there's probably some older juice in it than what's on the label. And when you compare this, when you, when you take this logic to, Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, when you take this logic to an 18 year old Highland park, which we know that just means 18 year olds minimum. What I think is, is that there ain't much older in that 18 year old Highland Park than 18. You're now you're okay. Now, now I will agree with you there. And I didn't even really think about it until you mentioned it. That usually when I look at a whiskey, I, I'm, I'm looking for the complexity, which I think the HP 18 has. Yes. But you're right with, and it has, I mean, I, I think why I rated it on the higher end was probably because I did like the, the profile and the balance and the complexity. But for you're sure. really, you're really right though. And it doesn't taste like an aged whiskey, it tastes young for but i mean yeah. it, it's kind of one of those things that's really tough because there's a hell of a lot of complexity and really good flavor but it doesn't you're right it doesn't have that 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 antique uh musky like old school feel yeah and and like i think for something that's sherry influenced um you'd expect it you'd right expect more of those drier those like dried fruit notes that said i mean this is nitpicky and again it's always subjective i mean i think the Highland, like if you I agree with you, the Highland park 18 right now it's like you know i'll take it i just don't know if there's a difference between the quote viking pride and the regular 18 so like i did a comparison video of the highland park 12 and the highland park 12 viking honor and i they were both bought within eight months of each other. So like 
it was probably the the newest Highland Park 12, completely followed by the oldest, um, um, you to, the oldest, or I'm sorry, yeah, the newest Highland Park 12, and then right away the release of the Highland Park Viking Hunter. So like, in theory, there was less than a year difference between the bottling and release. Gotcha. I didn't notice, like, I thought that, again, it was subtle, but like, I can't say that it was because it's a fundamentally different juice in the Viking Honor 12. I think it was more that it was, it could just be vast variation. In other words, the difference wasn't right. enough to me that I could really tell. I would love to have somebody do it with the 18. Like if you ever yeah. get your hands on the Viking Pride, you know, compare it to your old Highland Park 18, I'd love to hear if you know a significant difference. I think you're onto it though, that there's probably not, I think it is subtle. Like the only difference between the twelves that I got was a little more match sticky uh, notes on the new 12 versus the old 12. But um, with the 18, I, I, I you kind of, you kind of changed my mind, my, my viewpoint on the HP being 18 being so good because I never thought of the age taste not being there. And it does like the, if you taste the fine oak, uh, 21 McAllen, you're going to taste the age. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not a McAllen fanboy. You know me. I mean, I do like the classic cut. I do like the addition. Oh, yeah. But I'm not, I'm not like praising McAllen for a lot of the stuff, but they do have, when you get to their old stuff, it does have that antique taste that you're looking for, I think. Yeah. And this was something that um, I think it was, was Lunig Horse Lunig at whiskey.com kind of turned me on to was like he talked about how it was in some of it was in one of his whiskey re review videos but he talked about like you can tell with an nas especially like if there's older juice in it or not by the if you get things like dried fruit notes or dry toffee notes or dry like anything that seems not fresh and juicy but dry is like potentially indicative of like they've put a little bit of older juice in it because just because of natural oxidization. So when I did my Highland Park review, you know, I was kind of like attuned to that because, you know, that's Sherry. And so I was like, mm, you know, I'm not quite, it just didn't taste very old. It was light. It was lighter than I expected. And I was kind of like, I really liked it. Cause I, I mean, I'll go to the mat for Highland Park 12 any day of the week. I think it's the one of the best I don't know what the fuck I want to drink, so just pour me this, please. <laughs> like Highland Park Twelve covers covers it, and it's good. It's good. And the That's true. Fine, and I did the comparison, and like I said, I couldn't really tell if there was any difference, but yeah, it was one of these things that I've just kind of picked up on my journey, man, of like trying to learn about like what to look for in older stuff, and you know, he what he said really made sense to me because it's like, yeah, you know, there would be like natural breakdown of some of these things. So like, if you're drinking old an older whiskey, especially a sherried one, you know, and you're not getting it like if, if the fresh, if the fresh, uh, the fresh fruit, fresh sherry notes are kind of overpowering the more subtle, older dried fruits. Like I'd say that like, it's not quite as old as, you know, they, they haven't put, there's no like 10% 25 year old whiskey in that Highland Park 18, right? Like, so like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, what's amazing to me is that, um, I've only, and I've, I, I do go to a lot of restaurants and I, I go looking, I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm a foodie, but I do go looking for, you know, some, some nice quality restaurants. And I always look at the scotch menu just to see what's out there. And, and Highland Park sadly is one of those that you rarely ever see available for some reason. Like the only restaurant I ever sat down and had a nice Highland Park 12 for a meal was a Voltaggio restaurant. You know, the Voltaggio is probably yeah. up in Maryland. They're like, you know, the best chefs. Uh, it was uh, that DC national Harbor. They have a restaurant there and they had the Holland Park 12 there, but you can't find it anywhere, for, you know, usually at a bar or a restaurant that I know of. Do you? No. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Well, I mean, it's like, it, it, and you were, you were dead on with the Holland Park 12 being one of those that's like, it's so easily received. You could pair it with, with seafood. You could pair it with, with steak. Yeah. You could eat it with and drink it with anything. So yeah. why the hell these restaurants don't jump on board? I don't get it, man. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, Highland Park 12 is not an e one you see at bars a lot. You know, when, when I used to go to bars a lot in D.C., I would see, obviously, Glenlivet, Glenfiddich 12. Oh, yeah. Alsker 10, Laphroaig 10, and then a variety of McAllen's. That, yeah. 12 Sherry, McAllen 12 Fine Oak, blah, blah, blah. 
Maybe Valvany on the side too. Yeah, Bal- Bal- yeah, Balvany, Balvany twelve. Yeah, totally, totally. Isn't it sad? Maybe that- a Glenn Morangy, a Glenn Morangy Lasanta, or a Glenn Morangy ten. Yeah, I mean, I think like Highland Park twelve is just one of those that kind of just fits right in there. It it can, it can do eighty percent of what you want all the time. Right, like it can scratch the itch that you want about twenty, you know, eighty percent of the time. Yeah, because you, you want a little, little fruit, smoke, you want a little smoke, right. you want a little floral. You, you're right; it, it pretty much sits like if you have the whiskey spectrum, a square of all the different tastes and sherry yeah. peats. <laughs> it's right. right in the smack in the middle. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it's for the it's for the indecisive whiskey drinker. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree. And like, I I've come home multiple times where I was like. I don't know what I want to like. I want to have a pour, but I don't know what it is. Ah, fuck it. It's Highland Park 12. <laughs> like Highland Park 12 just that'll like get my brain working because you there's just it's just got a little bit of everything going for it. I know that there's somebody of the uh, yeah. the Mal- the 21 fine oak classic meh bottle. Wow, I thought it was. No, I mean, TH, you know, TH Silva is, is vying to be the next Malta in Montreal. He's got opinions. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you that's what, a compliment by the way. That's a compliment. My friend, I also right. noticed that uh, Andrew Page mentioned that he didn't like the new Highland Park Viking packaging, which I totally agree with. Oh, I agree too. It's and, goofy. They're, they've released so many whiskeys, I can't even keep up with it. And I'll tell you like, what, I'm talking about the Mike right. McKellen, the Fine Oak, the uh, Mr. Lee Aquaman, as we call him. He brought the Fine Oak 21. He brought the Brook Lottie, the 23 year old, um, the Black Arts 4.1. Or 5.1. It was one of the two. I think it was the four. And he brought a um, the Ardbeg 20 something, which was the 23 year old version. And it's, I thought the McKellen uh, Fine Oak, uh, that 21, I thought stood up with those other two. So, I mean, it can't be that damn bad. And the funny thing was, I'm a more of a fan of the Ardbeg 20 something. Uh, Paul was more of a fan of the uh, Black Arts, I believe, from Book Lottie. And uh, Lee was the biggest fan of the McKellen, I think, Final Note 21. So there you go. Now, actually, Paul and Lee liked the Final Note 21 better than the other two, which was surprising. Yeah. Have you – so you mentioned earlier the Twisted Tattoo. I just thought DH Silva popped in saying it was pretty decent value, and a couple other folks mentioned that it might be – that's a – is that a 15? Is that 16? 15? No, it's a 16-year-old. It's uh, one of those side bottles that they do on occasion, um, like when they did the uh, full volume or when they did the uh, Dark Origins. It's kind of that that offset. The cool thing was is they, they've been listening to, to a lot of us, and all of their new travel retail exclusives and, and all of their offshoot uh, bottles are now with A statements. They're not doing NAS as much as they used to anymore. Really? Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> it's a welcome change. Yeah. Like even their new Viking, like the Voyage of the Ravens got an age statement on it. Have you had that one the like uh, Eagle Wings or whatever, Wing of the something, it's like a fourteen year? I, I haven't had any of their specialized uh, bottles other than the Twisted Tattoo is the only one I've tried. Yeah. I mean I've got the Valknut and the Valkyrie, but those are NASs and the Dark Origins. The full volume had a statement. I think it was like 17 years or something. I can't remember what the age statement on it was. But uh, they don't, like, when they did that bottle, they didn't really advertise it very much, which I, which I thought was crazy. But I think they've caught wind of what they should be doing. I think that's why you're seeing the 16-year uh, Twisted Tattoo being an offering there. So Yeah, so you think the, the Twisted tattoos? I mean, I don't know what the price is. I think it's in that 70, 80 range worth, worth of worth the pickup. Say that again. Sorry. I said, that, I said I'm not sure what the price is on the twisted tattoo, but do you think it's worth the pickup? Oh yeah, it's only ninety nine dollars. I mean, for a 16 year Holland Park, um, that's you know, if if as like I said, as long as you're a fan of vanilla bombs or fruit bombs, that's going to be, I think, a good pickup. Yeah, because it definitely has that you know the the crumb, the vanilla custard with the with the the crumbled up. Um, Bready goodness, you know, the dessert where you mix the cherries and the cream and the, yeah, and the granola sure. based, you know, bottom and all that. It's like that in the glass. It's it's a pretty pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna toss it into the uh, machine here and see if I can find a bottle of it around here. I haven't I haven't considered it just because like I just saw twist. I didn't realize it was age stated. I yeah. saw it was twisted. It was twisted tattoo. I was like, oh, it's another one of these Valkyrie Valkyrie. No, Valkyrie. no, this is thankfully. <laughs> And thankfully, even though it's a similar price as the eighty, ninety dollar like Valkyries and Valknuts and Valfathers and all that crap, it's it's actually a, 
I think we'll price it. They, they probably could have got away with charging 124. I'm thinking. Yeah, it's I'm seeing it around price. 90. Is that is that 43 percent ABV or do you know? Uh, I don't have it memorized. Um, just do a quick search and you probably what pick. The heck, it. Telix. Sorry, man. I, <laughs> I, I don't have my distiller up. I would just look at it for you real fast. Yeah, I'm looking right now. Oh, so the twisted tattoo. So I'm finding it for around 90, 46.7. There you go. Yeah. It, it, I remember it not being 40 or 43, which made me very happy. <laughs> yeah. Because I really towards, you know, more the, of the. There's a uh, lot of flowery product description about it. Do you know if this is, I mean, I'm assuming it's Sherry, but yeah, this this looks good. Steven's saying he's just poured some of the uh, Glen Scotia Rum Cask uh, Festival bottle we had the other night. Yeah, I forgot to mention during the tasting, we had this, uh, he had this really nice spread. It was like four bottles and it was all blind and we had stickers to kind of match with the, with the thing. And of course I screwed up the glasses somehow, but I got it all sorted out and we went through and kind of rated what we thought it was and, and whatnot. And he really threw us all a curveball. Like one of them was PX cast. It tasted about 15 to 17 years old. I was thinking it was a Deanston, but it ended up being uh, an old Pulteney uh, special single cask release. Uh, it, it, I mean, it was great, but it didn't taste like old Pulteney to me at all. You know what I mean? <laughs> like a PX cask old Pulteney. I never, I couldn't even think about what that would wow, taste. Wow. Yeah. But it was. I don't, think I've ever had any, I don't think I've ever had a, sherry influence old Pulteney. that's all bourbon right it, it, pretty much across the board from what i remember even the 17 and 21 old stuff versus the uh the new uh 15 that i like i think they're all pretty much ex-bourbon it seems like but that one was like a deanston uh px you know cask what it was what it reminded me of but that was a good one definitely uh thanks for the uh reminder there steven that was a good that was a good taste all of them were really good have you had the full volume I, I do have it, and um, it's uh, it's good if you like the straightforward bourbon cask whiskeys. I'm not as, as, as big of a fan as that. I mean, I like Lagavulin 8, for example, but is it my favorite Lagavulin? Not even close. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like the Springbank local barley stuff, things like that. It's good, but if, if I could have my bourbon cask with like a sherry influence or another cask, maturation i'll take that way before the single one-dimensional ex-bourbon that's just you know usually yeah, the way I it is. but i'll tell you what even for a cheap bottle like the glimora 18 um at first i didn't wasn't really into it but after it oxidized for a while like you were talking about it was one of the best bottles i've ever had and, and it's like 75 80 bucks for an 18 I mean, it's cheap. <laughs> I've heard good things about like, yeah, I mean, that's one of those silveries that sort of flies under the radar. Same with uh, um, uh, Tomatin. Yeah. I've never had the Tomatin 18, but I've heard like the Tomatin 18 is no slouch. I haven't had the 18. I have had the Decades, which is like when they take a bunch of their really, really old stuff and mix it with like the one I had was not the recent one, but the last one where they had the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and it's all, all in one bottle. It was like their own blend of five decades worth of stuff. It was it was actually really good though. Yeah, it was uh, it was complex at least as you would think an eighteen year old would be. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I think Tomatin is is good quality. It's just it's just uh, they don't have the name recognition like a lot of these other guys do. Right, right. I want to get my hands on a Kaboke, and I haven't had one of those, but I hear great things about them all the time. On that one. I haven't had that either. Um, that's their like peated one, right? The Kubokan, I believe, is uh, yeah, because I remember when the Scotch for Dummies were going crazy about. Uh, I think they had two different releases. Uh, one was like a different color, orange versus like purple or black or something like that. But they all liked them, and, and after I saw them, I looked at other. Did you say Scotch Test Dummies or Scotch for Dummies? The four dummies. Uh, after I saw the review on it, I looked around a little bit to see some other opinions, and everyone pretty much likes that a lot. It seems like compared to the, you know, to the Tomatin Twelve or the uh, Fifteen, it seems like the Kabokan does really well comparatively to all the other stuff. Surprisingly, that even though it's an age, you know, an NAS bottle, you know what I mean. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm gonna open something. Yeah. I'm, gonna open up, I'm gonna open up. Uh, well, can't, it's like I move this way, it goes this way, so I have to be careful. Yes, yeah, so our big grooves I haven't opened up yet. It's the uh, limited release. Oh yeah. It's funny because Stephen had a guy on um, when we were doing that blind tasting. He, um, we were 
got in the chat about Ardbeg for some reason. I'm not sure why, because we didn't even taste one. But uh, he kept going off about how he thought the Grooves was a letdown. And I was thinking, wow, I mean, I felt that way with the drum. Maybe he was thinking of the drum, but probably not. But like the drum was like the only one that was ever kind of a a let down when it comes to the Ardbeg series that I remember any time, you know? Yeah, I I have a bottle of the committee release of the drum. It's probably about 35% of the way down. <laughs> that says um, all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, just, I just never found myself wanting to drink it. I'm hoping that's the one that he's uh, talking about there, Stephen. Uh, let me oh, see the it. Grooves. The groups I thought was pretty good. I did too, and that's why I was so surprised that he thought it felt flat. He kept saying, "Again, it flat. like I mean, I, I, you know, obviously it's subjective, and then obviously there's a cost consideration. I mean, at least in one sense, right? A, a committee release of the grooves is 130, 120, 130 bucks. Is that is that 120, 30 dollar whiskey? No, <laughs> but it's yeah. good. It's good, but like." Now the regular release that they did of it, the forty what forty six percent or whatever, you're opening the forty six percent. Yeah, I think I see what he's saying because I, I tell you what, the nose on the committee release I think did pop a lot more. Yeah, I remember this that. one. It's like um, it's there, but it's it's definitely muted comparatively to the committee release. So I think I see what he's saying when he meant flat because I think he was talking about the limited release, not the committee, but. Yeah, the drum, I didn't have the regular release. I had the committee. Again, I got it sitting down in my basement, not very drank. I, I just, eh. to be in the I think the, the, the new one, the black, redeems itself with that. Oh, Pinot yeah. Noir. Is it a Pinot Noir finish or is it Pinot Noir maturation? I don't remember. It was but, a. It was like a, a maturation. Uh, it was the New Zealand Pinot Noir cask, I remember, after like, um, I want to say it was 12... 10 or 12 years and then matured, I think, for at least a few. Yeah. Like, two or three, I think, at the end. Don't quote me on that, but I think it was like taking their 10 year and maybe maturing it in those casks for like uh, two or three years. That makes sense. I, I liked, I, I mean, I think you and I were in consensus. I think if folks look, is the committee release uh, our big black worth 140 bucks? Uh, Probably not, but is it, if you're, you know, it's, look, you're not just paying for the whiskey, you're paying for the, like, fun, the anticipation, the experience, the whole thing, and, like, for me, I was willing to throw on the money for it, because it's fun. Um, the drum, I was disappointed in, and I almost held off on the Black Committee release because of it, but I went out shopping, and I made, I asked the guy, my local liquor smith, the wrong question, I said, Hey, got any of that art bag black? And he's like, sure do. I was like, well, gotta buy it now. <laughs> but I, I, to your point, um, I thought the Grooves was good. I think the Kelpie was decent. I thought the Dark Cove was great. And I think the black is the best thing since the Dark Cove. Yeah, I'll agree with you there. This I, I can see Dram wasn't a fan of the Grooves either, and I, I can tell why. This, to me, is a good example, and probably, to me, probably the most different, and I'm hoping it's not just because I haven't had it in a little while, but the, the, the Ardbeg Grooves committee release, to me, was, was like a 4.25, 4.5 whiskey. I thought it was really good. This one is, it's it's not bad. It's just not near as powerful. Uh, it, uh, it can't just be the ABV, I would think. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, well, that's a good point, Alex. Here's my theory. They released that are committee releases at barrel strength, whatever it is. And then they water it down for the other release. So like, because it's an NAS. I mean, all of these releases are NAS. I mean, I don't think that they would change it too much, right? So you might be just drinking a watered down grooves. Well, I think, like, I think you're right partially. Like with the Dark Cove, I've heard that that one was a different actual make. Uh, with the Kelpie, oh, I'm really? trying to remember. Like, like there's certain ones that they do that are different, like like makes for some reason. But some of them are the same. I think the Kelpie one was the same, but the Dark Cove was different. I have to go back and look at the specificity, you know, of the 
the, the differences between the two. But I remember hearing like that they had different makes on like the earlier ones, but then they started doing maybe with the grooves, just the, uh, like you said, the more dilution, the watered down version of it. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm not sure why that is I, though. I'm frankly, un, I, I don't know. I, I guess my, yeah, I, I just always thought that the, the the re, the major release that they did of the stuff that they had released as committee releases it was always just kind of watered down versions i thought that too but there, i did hear something i, th I think it might have been I, I can't remember when they i think the perpetuum they had a um i know they had a committee release for that one. Oh, did they i never yeah. had that was that yeah, 2016 yeah. it's a rare one it's a 2015 actually yeah, 2015 on the Perpetuum. That was right during the uh, Dark Cove, which is was also um, that same year, I'm pretty sure. Kelpie was 2016, I believe. I'm yeah. Off, Kelpie was, but, no, Kelpie was seven, 17, I think. Was 17. Okay. The Perpetuum, I think, was the first year they started doing committee. No, they, had, they, they actually had committee alligator releases and stuff, too, I remember seeing. So, hmm. I think after the alligator, after the perpetuum, after the dark cove, I think right during the Kelpie, I think the Kelpie was like the last release they did that was a different make from the CR to the LR, the committee versus the limited. I think the, what was after the Kelpie? The Grooves. I think this Grooves was the one that they started doing the watered down thing. Grooves was definitely 2018. I want to say that this was the first year they probably started this, and this might be the reason why I never uh, noticed the differences. This is the first time I've ever had the limited release of it. Huh. It's amazing what, like, 10% of ABV will do to a dram, though. <laughs> yeah, get into it, man. I'm going to step away for just a second. I'm going to pour uh, a Mocker Bay cast strength and uh, go get myself a little water, so I will return in a few minutes. Sounds good, man. I appreciate it. There we go. Let me uh, try to catch up. It looks like Ben was asking DHS if he thought the grooves was better than the, uh, what was that? If he thought the grooves was better than the other ones, but, huh. That's uh, Black CR versus grooves, 46%. He liked the grooves better. I'm surprised. I think it's, uh, I don't think it's bad, but man, I, I, I think that the strength on this 46 is so different than the CR and I'm drinking it neat. I'm not putting anything on it. Did you add water DHS to the uh, grooves to get that difference? I'm just curious if, uh, if you, um, you know, had, um, Maybe some well, couple of drops of water. I mean, I'm kind of hesitant about putting any water on it because it's already uh, a bit tamer than the um, committee release. But like I said, it's, I'm not knocking it. It's still a great dram. Oh, man, I love the notes on the tropical pineapples. Even some peaches in there, nectarines. Huh. Some honeysuckle, some hay, like a little bit of the um, very subtle on the on the herbal or florals. Hmm. I love the peat, but the the smokiness is not as thick as the CR was the committee release too. Still a, a good dram. I wish it was like 48%. That would be perfect, I think. I think that's what I'd probably take my, uh, yeah, 46 versus 48. I think 48 would have been the sweet spot on this because I can't remember what the other It's probably 51-ish on the committee release. So I'm thinking I probably would take it down a little bit in a couple drops, but I could be wrong. Well, it's Toro. Good to see you, man. It's been a while. Sorry to hear about the lockdown. That stinks. 
looks like Aquaviti's uh, last virtual pub. You were in Spain. Wow. Ultronic 15 is hard to find, but yeah. I need a bottle, too, of the Revival. Um, I've had a little bit of everything, but the um, I've had it at an expo, but I need my own bottle of it because I, I, it's one of the ones I need. Uh, why you don't invite me? Uh-oh. You can be. You can come in here, Dram. One second, man. Let me see if I can. Uh... Oh, there's. Hey, what's up? I'm back. Dram was asking for an invite. You mind if I have him tag along a little bit on the side? Oh yeah, yeah. Drop in, man. Let's Great. see. I also see Welsh Toros in the house. Welsh Toro is somebody I remember uh, having some chat with back in the day on Food Cook's channel. Nice to see you, Welsh Toro. Cheers. Yeah, it's been a while. Late on your end of the end of the world. Glad to see have you again. Here. Where's he at again? Do you know? UK. Oh, okay. Wow. I'm yeah, not mistaken. Around. Correct me if I'm wrong, West Toro. <laughs> I think you're right. Good to see you nonetheless. Let's see if we can find Dram's uh, email address in here. Oh, man. I don't Dude, let me just tell you right now. Mocker Bay cast strength. <laughs> good. Bad? It's so good. Um, it's better. It's... I mean, it has a very similar profile as that poor Charlotte 10 I was drinking, but dude, this this stuff is next level. It's so damn good. I think this might be one of the best peated Islas that I've had. It's just fantastic. I got to get you a sample of this, brother. Oh, wow. That that would be awesome. The, um, the cast if we're gonna, if we're gonna try and do this on the regular, man, if we're gonna do Tuesdays on the regular, I'm, we should definitely do some sample swaps and live tastings together. Sounds good to me. I'm trying to think of what Stram's what Stram's email address. Do you know what it is? <laughs> I don't. I thought hit I had up, it. hit us up. Uh, hit me up at Malt Muser or or, or hit uh, Telex up and and let us know your email. We'll get you in. Yeah, because I, I, I I'm ready to go. Black CR versus Drum Regular. <laughs> I mean, I've actually, <laughs> you know the answer to that. I think his name is either Cody or Corey. I, I, I can't remember which one it is, but I've tried different versions in my uh, in my damn, you know, history. But for some reason, I don't have them in there. I, and I know I've emailed him before. That's what's so frustrating is like, why is it not picking it up? That's crazy. Send me an email, uh Corey, because uh, uh, I don't think I've got a recent one from you for some reason. Let me go into the, like a, I've got a scotchy folder. Maybe I could find it in there. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I found it. I found it. it took me a while. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, for some reason, it wasn't looking, it wasn't a uh, getting it in the um i just sent him an invite so we got that taken care of sorry about that uh dram you should see it here in a second though if you take a look and i'll try to keep my eye out on the uh, corner what you uh so what do you um the mark your bay have you had the the non-castering version of it by chance yeah i think the, i think the regular one is great too i did like both <laughs> Comparatively, I, didn't, I wasn't a big fan of the 100% Isla one, though. Uh, I did like the Mark Here Bay one a lot, though. What do you think? Of, have you heard of the 100% yeah. Isla? Um, I haven't, actually. The only, the only, I've had a good amount. I think the Lock Gorm is the best thing that they make out of their regular lineup. Yeah. But this Mark Bay cast strength is right behind it. Um, I've had a couple single casks. I have the Red Wine cask. I've had the Sauternes. The only one that I don't that I didn't really love from Kilhoman is the Saneg. Oh, wow. Yeah, the Saneg. Yeah. Hmm. It just didn't do it for me. It might have just because, like, the thing about Kilhoman is in addition to their regular releases, it's like year by year, the vintage really matters. Like, they're just, they can be totally different whiskeys. Like, if you've had the Lock Orb from 18 versus 19, the 19, I think, is just exponentially better. But the, um, the, uh, the San Egg, the one that I had 2016, I think, I don't know. It just didn't quite do it for me, which is weird because I like the mix of bourbon and sherry. It just it just didn't quite do it for me. But, you know, it's I'm going to revisit again because I like Kill Home and I think they make great stuff. I got two questions for you. Do you like spice bombs usually? 
Mm, not depends. big on the savory spice bombs. It like, depends. I mean, it really depends what else is what else is happening in it. I mean, there's, there's two dreams I would be weary of in your position if you did not like the Sineg, and that's the Holland Park Fire. If you ever come across that one, I would be kind mm-hmm. of maybe hesitant because it's very comparable on the the spice bomb. And it's also like a couple hundred bucks, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, very, it's on the high end too. It's like 300 bucks, I think, for the fire and the ice. But another one is the Longmorn 18. It's a very savory, spicy, it's an Ethiopian Sambusa kind of taste to it. It's very so savory, spicy. And I, that's what I got off the of Seneg too. And I think it's, a, it's definitely one of those flavors where you're kind of like, I don't know. Cause I, I usually don't like it dry like that. But if I'm going to be for a savory dream, I might go for that. But it's a tough one. That's interesting, man. I um, that's a that's a, a dynamic I've never really tried. So that's something I definitely want to look into. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see what you would think of the Longhorn 16 if you wouldn't like it. So I wouldn't go. I'm not saying go and buy a bottle, but if you go and get a sample somehow, that would be awesome just to see what you think about it. Yeah, I'm, I'll put that on my list for sure, for sure. Hey, Dream Dude's in the house. Look who it is. Hey, Cor- is, is it Cody or Corey? Cody. Can you hear me? Oh, he's muted. Oh, he's on mute, yeah. He's looking for the, uh, there you go. Cody. <laughs> Cody, there you go. Sorry, man. I, I apologize. I, I keep wanting to call you Corey for some crazy reason. <laughs> that That happens a lot, like even at, at work, like I get called Corey. And What's up, Cody? Um, Those you don't hate me. Where, are you, where are you? Um, so Telex is in Maryland. I'm in Philadelphia. Where are you from? I'm in uh, California. Oh, there. cool, cool, cool. Welcome. He's at the best Scotch prices out there, man. He's the oh, one. Yeah. He can Some get price. the. Uh, what was the one you were seeing? It was only like eighty, eighty to ninety dollars. I think it was the uh, Twisted Tattoo, right? Yeah, I think it's ninety something here. Wow. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's the definitely good, man. 80, $80 to ninety dollars. I think it was the uh, twist. T- oh, a little bit of feedback. No, nah, that's me. <laughs> that's cool. I have to t- catch myself doing it too without the headset, especially. <laughs> I was trying to keep the the chat up on YouTube and. Uh, yeah. Like- what did you decide on opening it up there, Cody? Um, right now I'm drinking Glendronic Twelve. Nice. It's the first half of the work, Dram, right? Yeah, that's what I started with tonight. Great for it. So, but I'm just about ready for something else. Hmm. If I was going from a lunch at 12, I would think. Are you, uh, what do you think about spicy Drams? Do you like the spice bomb? I'm not picky. Have you ever had a Longmorn or a um, or the ones I was talking about as far as like the Longmorn 16 or the Holland Park Fire? Or the uh, the Kilhoman Seneg, any of those three? Uh, I haven't had Longmorn, but I've had the other two. Do you think they're spicy, or would you consider them spicier drams than others? Um, I don't think Seneg is spicy. I wouldn't call it spicy. Savory? But, um, no, I mean, I think it's still kind of that sweet sherry to me. Isn't it more on the Oloroso side though than the PX kind of side? It is. Yeah, but I, don't, I don't find it like it's. It doesn't have that nuttiness because it's still got some bourbon cask maturation too, right? So that's a good point. It's true. I was. I think since it's not on the sweeter, fruitier PX side of things, I always gravitate towards those as being more savory, spicy to me for some reason. I don't know why, but. Mm. I was trying to, to talk to Malt about like why he might not prefer that one. What did you did you comparatively to uh, Seneg versus other Kilhomans, Cody? What do you think about that? Do you like it or you, is it one of your least favorites? No, I like Seneg. I don't I don't own a bottle, but I had recommended it recently to my brother in law who picked one up. So, what would you say, people that would like? What what do you what did you like the most about it that you can remember, if anything? Um, I don't know. It's just, just a being solid good taste. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's solid. Righteous man, I have a uh, so just to like uh, bookend our Highland Park conversation. I've actually got two or three questions. Have 
any of you had the Highland Park light or dark, which are the 17s? If so, which would you recommend? Second question. And this one might be good for the chat too. So I'm torn between a Glen, a signatory, sing, uh, signatory release Glen Glassaw 20 or a signatory Klein Leash 20 cast strength. Which one would you recommend? I would go with the Klein Leash for that question mm -hmm. and for the light mm -hmm. versus dark. I prefer the dark. They're both quality whiskey. Are they worth $300? It's, it's, it's on that like edge. <laughs> They're 17 years, though, so, I mean, that's my thing. What do you, about, think, what right. do you think, Cody? Uh, yeah, so first, the one question, Klein Leash. I think Klein Leash. Um, and for the Highland Parks, uh, I like them both just about equally. Ten, typically, I'll, I'll lean towards sherry stuff, um, but the light, it was like vanilla ice cream, so I really like that, but not worth $300, either of them, so at all. Isn't that the tough thing? It's like well, if you were going to put a price on it, Cody, what would you rate the light and the dark for value wise? Just curious. Uh, so it should be half the price. Wow. Okay. I'm not sure if I would go oh, that okay. great. That's, that's a good, yeah. I would say 200 ish, but I'm a little more. They're 17 years old. <laughs> I know, but hell, a Dalmore 18 costs $230. Well, that, that's Dalmore. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look at like Glen Drone, right? It's like that's, that's real that. talk right there, man. Yeah, you ain't lying. Here, the Glen Drone 18 is 189 man. All right, let me ask you guys. You guys, you guys, are, you guys, are, you guys are aligned. Twisted Tattoo, 90 bucks. Yes. So yes. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna... I've, I've, I've had one in my hand multiple times, and then I end up getting something else. So I've, all right. I know I'm going to buy it. Just... I'm going to do it. And then I got to, and not to, not to bogart this a little bit, but um, Stephen Connor said, what is the Klein Leash aged in? So I'm looking at, I'm looking at two things right now, and I got to know if I'm going to pull the trigger. Glen going 25 for 329 and Klein Leash. 20 year old 1996 cast strength it is 56.3 percent and it looks like it's uh refill sherry mm. love your opinions on this the other things i'm going to include for sure is the twisted tattoo and then um yeah including the twisted tattoo i'm going to do the twisted tattoo but interested do i pull the trigger on the glen going 25 for 329 and signatory klein Lich 20 year old or do i spend another 50 and do glenn glassaw 20 signatory which is also first full sherry i'm 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 thinking the cleanlish but what do you think cody i'm doing a little yeah, shopping I'd, today. I'd, I'd pick cleanlish over glenn glassaw i would too i think cleanlish is a very underrated distillery across the board for many reasons yeah i tend to agree I mean, it's like old school Brewer, basically, right? I mean, isn't that where Brewer originated from? Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I, oh man, that's one. I've, I've tasted, like, tasted a little bit of Port Ellen and tasted a little bit of Brewer, but man, I would kill for a bottle. <laughs> Looks like you're getting a lot of Klein Lush votes. Yeah. My glass I mean, is empty. What next? Ooh, okay. So you went to the Glendronic 12, and you, if you're, hmm, do you, um, you ever had the, uh, the Tamdu, uh, it's the, Dab the, I can't say it, the Dabadilia Dram? Have you heard, no. you've heard of that one? I've heard of it's, it, yeah. That's a really, that's just another spice bomb I would consider really, I mean, ultra spicy. Like the Holland Park Fire, I thought was pretty spicy too. I'm trying to think of, um, uh, are you into that kind of stuff? Or are you more looking for like an ex bourbon cask? Are you, are you feeling straightforward with that, or are you want more sherry or cask influence on it? Um, let's stay on the sherry side of things. Sherry from a Glendronic, man. Oh, man. I would say. You got any uh, thoughts there, Malt? Say it one more time. Do you have any thoughts on if you were starting with a Glendronic 12, if you were staying toward the sherry, what would you uh, gravitate toward after that? 
Oh, I, I would add a little age and a little dynamism to it. So I'd look for maybe an Oloroso PX, so like a Glen Allocky 15, Glendronic 15 even. Maybe uh, maybe look for the bourbon, the bourbon sherry split. It depends. I mean, you, if you're still starting, I don't know. I wouldn't go into peat. I wouldn't do go have, into peat just yet. Do you have any? Do you have any Bladnockadilla 15 by chance? No. That's a really good I bottle, man. Uh, if, if I was going toward the after the Glendronic 12, I would hit like a Bladnockadilla 15. Um, I'm trying to think of another really good 15 level sherried. Uh, Glamora has got a good 15. It's got sherry in it. Um, do you have any uh, Glamoras at all there, Cody? It's got a 15 uh, sherry, maybe. Just, just one, but it's not sherry. It's an independent. Gotcha. Okay. 18. Um, this, was a, this is a 13-year-old cash drink, 53.4%, and it was only $35. Oh, wow. <laughs> what do you think about Tamont and Cody? Do you, we were talking about Tamont a little earlier. Are you a big fan of those guys at all for the price point, or do you think it's just overrated, or what do you think? Uh, middle of the road. I'm not a big fan, but, I mean, their prices are hard to beat, so That's I don't have to Hmm. I don't find myself buying it. So. No, I hear you. I'm trying to think of um, a good mid-level 15-ish sherry. Uh, uh, ben Romick. Ben romick has got some really good stuff. I'm not sure if they do any sherry stuff at 15, do they? Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a combination of experiment. Yeah. Do that. That's what I would. I think he's got. I think he's in the mark on that one. Good. Good job there, Malt. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's like that's one that you could grab at that price. That's an awesome. Uh, I love their Imperial Proof ten-year-old uh, that I've got behind me there. That's one of my favorites, and I like the uh, the 2006 peat smoke. If you ever get a chance to see that one, that's pretty good too. It was only a two that I can remember having that stood out. But I don't have the 15. I never tried it. I want to get my hands on a bottle, though. Is that the 15? Nice. Okay. Is it 43%? Yeah. And that's the, the, the sherry and the bourbon influence on that one, right? Yeah. I'd say that's a good step. Let, let me know what you think about that one. I'm really curious because I, I need to get my hands on that bottle specifically. You can tell by the color. Definitely some sherry influence in there. And that's not colored or chill filtered from what I remember, right? Not colored, that's for sure. I don't know about chill filtration because it is 43%. Gotcha, yeah. It can't really knock too much on, on that. I mean, which is worse? Is it if do you, When you look at the whiskey, do you think chill filtration, malt, do you think it's worse or coloring is worse or is it equal as far as like a... Chill filtration uh, is definitely worse. I think, I, I don't think there's, for me, it's uncontroversial i think like the coloring thing i think it's debatable whether or not it affects flavor i think chill filtration affects the the uh the experience much more i yeah i've just never had in i've never had it i've had whiskeys that have had i mean look here's a classic example look at any lafroic <laughs> like most of them are like you get non chill filtered lafroic i just think the i think the mouthfeel has so much more impact on how you experience a whiskey than like whatever flavor might be slightly diminished by color. And it's not even, I, it's not even proven that the color changes flavor. Like some folks say it does, some folks say it doesn't. I think everybody should do it with natural color just because why the fuck wouldn't you? But if you had to choose, I would take an unchill filtered over, I would take unchill filtered with colorant added versus colorant, not uh, natural color and chill filtered any day of the week. What do you think, Cody? Same thing? Yeah, I'll agree. That's what I was thinking too. It's like, um, it's just with the coloring, it, it's just weird. I, I don't know consistency is a big thing with a lot of people, but would you really, would either one of you, would you really be thrown off if you didn't get a consistent coloring with when you're looking at whiskey? I, will I even notice? I don't have that many bottles of the same thing. <laughs> Look, I don't know. Like, I honestly, most of my 
worry about color just comes from like it just feels cheap right, right. there are certain whiskeys there's there are two distilleries i think of in particular where the color is so obvious dalmore one of them when, perhaps <laughs> well there's three dalmore <laughs> bowmore no oh, bowmore is a bad one yeah. and which one alkentoshin yeah oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people guilty. Like I just did that that roll Otnagar earlier, and that's definitely. I mean, Diageo goes crazy with their uh, coloring on some of their stuff. I'm sure Cardu is, and some of their other ones too. But yeah, I mean, the, the filtration probably does affect the taste overall. It's just I, I'm a I'm a big fan of natural. Like if I can get whatever it is, I don't care if it's three years old and it's it's looks like water. Is I'm, I know when I get it, if it's at that state, it's pure, it's not tainted with anything else. I just want it natural. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I think like ideal situation is you have it both ways, right? I mean, you get on chill filter, natural color. Like that's just what most people who are into it should expect. But if you, unfortunately, I mean, Glenn Goyne, classic example. The, all of their stuff <laughs> is pretty much non chill filtered, but it, most of it has color in it. What do you think, Cody? If you stick to buying whiskeys over 46%, then you don't usually have to worry about chill filtration. That's a good point. True. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> that is a good point. That's that's the tough thing. Is like, you know. And these days, I buy a lot of cash drink stuff typically. So. Yeah. I find yeah, myself the I, more I'm getting into it, the more I'm leaning towards uh, at least 48% is my limit like like area typically. Unless 46 can wow me sometimes, but 48 is usually the bare minimum. Go ahead, Mont. Hmm. No, I was just going to say that I think, I mean, look, I, there are a lot of 46 percenters that I think probably have color and added. I'm not sure I always noticed it. I'm not going to, I don't know. The color thing doesn't, like it sucks and it's not worth it and it's stupid. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be the thing that dissuades me from right. purchasing something, right? I mean, what you want is just like the quality integrity of the cask, which is what's most important. Yeah. And like, you know, I, I wish they wouldn't do it, but I'm not going to do Delmore too much. But the King of Alexander is a good example of that, where you can get a 40% whiskey, you can get it with a lot of coloring, I'm sure, and, and all sorts of additives. But when when all said and done, when you when you sit down, you pour it neat, you sip it, you put a drop of water, and you and you let it sit out and and, and enjoy it. It actually is a damn good dram. I mean, it's not worth $300, but it, it is a solid good 40% with a drop of water whiskey. I mean, no matter how much coloring you put in it, it's still solid. I'm not going to give it a, a 5 out of 5 rating, but you know, I'm not going to give it a 3 out of 5 either. It's, it's in between, right. you know. Hey, Dram, what did you think of the um, of that Blendromic uh, 15? Give us some uh, kind of little bit of an overview, if you don't mind. Um, it's definitely sherry heavy. So this is 43%, but Ben Romics are lightly peated. So it tastes, it's, it doesn't taste thin or it doesn't taste 43%. When like you say lightly peated, are you, are you talking like 5 ppm or a little bit between, like closer to like to 20 maybe? Or do you know? Probably, probably more than 5. Between 5 and 20, somewhere in there? Yeah. I mean, uh, you can definitely tell it's there, but I wouldn't call this a peated whiskey per se. Gotcha. It's not like, have you ever had their peat smoke? Uh, I had the mm -hmm. 2006 that was pretty good. Did you have that one before? Mm -hmm. Did you like? Yeah. I actually like that one. Did you like it that, too? That is very peated. That's that's like 65 ppm. Yeah, now we're talking. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. but but seriously, on the in the Baromic 15. Uh, do you do you like it as much as like the Imperial Proof Ten or like uh, something compar comparable? Is it like that quality? Um, it's close. I mean, I'd probably pick a cast strength anything over it, but th it's really good. I'm a big fan of Ben Romick because all their stuff they use uh, first fill barrels, so they always taste really really good. I never had a bad version of anything from those guys. And yeah, have you ever done a Ben Romic before their malt? Just out of curiosity. 
I have uh, I have two bottles of Glen Romic. I have the 15 and the organic, and both of them I think are really good. I haven't got the chance to get that Imperial, which is the I think the cast strength. Yeah, it's a ten year old cast strength uh whiskey. It's 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 probably my favorite that I've actually had by them. Well uh, the Imperial, because... go ahead. The Imperial, they don't make the Imperial proof anymore. They just have a regular cast strength now. Oh, okay. Either way is probably pretty comparable. Have you noticed but, a quality shift at all between the cast strength versus the Imperial, uh, Cody? I haven't had the, the new cast strength, so Oh, okay, I haven't either, so I can't tell you if it's any different. But I, I would think that they're pretty good on their quality. I don't think it would shift that much. So if you see it malt for a good price, I would definitely uh, pick up a cast strength, uh, especially if there's a – is there a year statement on the new one? I don't think so. Oh. Well, I don't know. There might be because they always put, like, a vintage and bottling date on a lot of their NAS-looking stuff. Gotcha. So, but I don't know. I would I would look and see and make sure it's at least ten years if you can. Uh, if you can't find it, the cast strength at ten year uh, malt, I would go for the imperial proof if you can still find it. Which I think yeah, it's that's a hard one to get my hands on. Oh, okay. I'll keep my if I see uh, one available uh, that you can get it shipped, I'll let you know definitely. Have you had the Glenn, Have you had the Ben Romick fifteen? Me, I have not. Uh, that's what he's drinking, but I have not had it yet. I want to get my yeah. hands on it though because I am a big fan of their stuff. Yeah, me too. I think uh, the Glen, the 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 Ben Romick fifteen is one of my favorites. What you got there, Cody? What the old particular uh, bottle? Yeah, Santa Cruz, and just uh, asked Malt if he had any old particular indies. I just have no, I haven't. I've tasted only their Talisker. I think it was the Talisker eight cast strength that an old particular had a ver version of that. I think. Oh wow, thirty year old Benahaven. Oh man. <laughs> He's torturing me over here. <laughs> a 30-year-old. An old particular is a good independent bottling. He's got two of them. Okay, one of those should go to 604 Thomas Way, Severna Park, Maryland, <laughs> 21146. <laughs> they are different. Oh, wow, really? really? Oh, my good. Yeah, the, the, the one on the left is a little dark. darker. Yeah, sherry probably. And bourbon, I take it. Is that the difference? Oh, I just pulled the trigger. I'm getting a Glen. I just pulled the trigger. Uh, I didn't get the Ardbog. I'm getting the Glen, the Glen Goyne 25. And really? Also, yeah. And also a Highland Park Twisted Tattoo. I may still get the Ardbog, but I pulled the trigger on the Glen Goyne 25 and the uh, Twisted Tattoo. So I'm surprised that beat it out. Was you going by the, what the people were saying in the chat? Uh, no, it's it's because I if I get the art bog, I gotta get it from a different just different shipping place. And so the uh, place I'm on, I'm on right now has. Uh, so here's what I got. I grabbed another bottle of the uh, Kilholm and Mocker Bay Cast Strength. I grabbed the Glen Goyne 25, another bottle of the Glen Benaromic 15, and a bottle of the Highland Park Twisted Tattoo 16. That's a nice Not spread. Good, good work. <laughs> That's a nice spread. My goodness, Cody, I, 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 that's some crazy bottles you just pulled out there. I just bought them. Fuck it. Oh, and I got a Glen, a Glen, a Glen Morangy ten, the regular, because it was twenty eight bucks. So I had. To oh get wow. It. So we'll we'll have a nice palate starter. This will be a nice spread. I want to do it like an experiment and get the Morangy ten, but take my own sherry or my own, you know, other influence and put it in, and see if it would doll it up a little bit if it would be uh, more acceptable or not because I'm, I'm not not a fan of the tin only because it's got a lot of florals and I found it you know to be a yeah. bit basic without the Lasanta or the Quinta Rabanne or something like that Agreed. I'm, I'm wondering if you could take your own tint like the tin and put your own like mark on it with a couple drops of, of decent sherry if it would really make a difference have you tried that yet Malt? No um, I do really like uh, I like Glen Morangy a lot. The tin by itself. I, well, the tin is okay. I, I've had a lot of them. Um, I'm trying to think about the more than that. I had the Cadbull Estates, which I just did a review of. Your audio is, is going crazy. One second. Do you hear that? Oh, do, but, hey, hey, uh, hey, Cody. Can you can you move your keyboard somewhere? Because I think when you're typing, it's probably coming over the audio. Yeah, I'm on a right. laptop, so 
Sorry, man. Can you mute, mute, mute yourself if you're going to type, if you don't mind? Thanks, man. I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Not, um, ahead, Walt. yeah, I've had, I'm trying to think of all the Glen, Glen Orangies I've had, which is, again, one of my favorite distilleries. Cadball Estate 15, La Santa, Quinta Rubin 12 and 14, Signet, Spios. Spios is, might be my favorite. That's a good rye. It's a rye type of whiskey. I like that one. Yeah, I love that one. I love that one. You like the Astar too? I have the Astar. It's a good I one. Like a I like the, um, yeah, and I've had the 10, the 18. I think the 18 is really, really good. Um, Let me ask you a question. I, Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had the uh, Milishan or the, or the to sale? Oh, I have the Tain, which is the other travel exclusive. Um, the Tain, I have actually haven't drank yet. Now that I think about it, well, the, um, the Tain's a travel exclusive, but they have the private collection that they do every year, like the Alanta and the uh, the Balcalta and the they have the Alta yeah. and the Milshan, the Two Sail, like the Two Sail and the uh, Milshan. I've had. I love the Two Sail. I wasn't a big fan of the Milshan for some reason, though. And I like sweet rams, but I thought the two cell was more sweeter than Milshan. And the Milshan is the one they touted as being this very overly sweet dram, but I thought it was a completely different experience, which is kind of funny. What do you got there, Cody? Oh, um, no. Have you had any, any either of those, the Milshan or the uh, two cell there, Malt? Yeah, I have both. Did you like them? Uh, I like the two sale. Milshan's okay. It's a little sweet for me. And that's the weird thing. I thought the two sale was sweeter, but I did like the two sale a lot better than Milshan, which was kind of weird. How I haven't had either of those. Yeah, those are two that I'd love to get get my hands on. If you do some searches. Um, locally on the dusty shelves I'm, i bet you'll still see them because i recently walked into a store and saw both the milshan and the two cells sitting there for like a hundred bucks so they're, they're still definitely available out there on the uh, shelves are the, the, oh, those weren't travel exclusives is what you're saying no, the two cell and the um, and the Milshan are, are they're called the private collection where they release. It's kind of like the equivalent of the Carriages series for Lafroy, basically. It's it. a, a yearly release. Think of it that way. Their newest one, I think, was the Alta, right there, Dram. Do you know? Yep, that was yep. the they do the private select or, or whatever. The private select was uh, from this year. Last year was this it was the Spios. This year was the uh, uh, the Alta. Which yeah, I had. yeah, before the Spios, they had the uh, two cell, the Michon, the most Michon, okay. sorry, the Bacalta, the Alanta, I think is one. They have a lot of like, it's kind of like the carriages where you can go back a good 10 years and find all these interesting little different cast, you know, maturations of different stuff. And um, I would probably skip the Milshine, but I would definitely look up for that two cell. It's actually pretty good if you can find it. Have you had any of the travel exclusives like the Tain or anything else? I haven't had a teen. I haven't had a, I'm trying to think of the Morangy uh, travel retail. I don't think yeah. so. I think one's the Cadball. I didn't have that Cadball's one. Cadball's not travel. I think that one's pretty readily available now. Oh, is it? Well, they have a new 15 year old called the Cadball Estate. But that's yeah, that's the one. I'm, yeah, that's the one I was talking different. about. Yeah. It's different than the travel retail one. The Cadball Estate is like a, it's like a local barley type play. So like that's all this, you know, the, the whole thing about it is it's barley that's grown on the property and uh, on the estate, which Glen Morgie owns and all of this. It's a very like sweet, it's, it reminds me of like a more malty version of Dahl Winnie 15. It's good. It's a good, it's a good pour. Um, depends on what price you get it for, of course, but. Gotcha. The, um. Yeah, it's it's weird how many like, versions of these things they have out there. Would you pull yeah, out their got it right there? Yeah, I just did a review of that a couple of weeks ago. Um, that's a good board. Have you uh, tasted it yet, there, Cody? Yeah. What do you think so far? I know you just kind of got it open there. Uh, no, I, I I actually wrote some notes on this one. I, I do like it. It's pretty good. I'm glad I got it. Honey, citrus. 
vanilla cool. deliciousness <laughs> is what I got out of that. I mean, it, it's, it is Glen Morangy. I mean, it, it, it's your typical Glen Morangy, but. If you didn't mind me asking, where did you both get yours from? Uh, I got it online. Okay. But it's, it's actually all over the shops in South Jersey. Like, we can find it in liquor stores pretty much everywhere. 70 well, bucks, 75 bucks. What about you, Cody? Yeah, KNL here. Can't know what local there. Oh, okay. So it's pretty easy. Okay. I haven't looked at, I haven't been to the store in ages. As you know, we're all kind of under locked. I haven't left the house since like March the 9th, which is really sad, but I'd love to get out and find some, some whiskey. Yeah. Ordering has not been the most fun. I'm still waiting for my, my Bonahaven and my uh, Khalilo to show up. Hopefully uh, when I call tomorrow, they'll know where it is. <laughs> I'm going to nightcap here with uh, Lagavulin 12. Nice. Yeah. This year. The 2018. That's, that's the uh, 12. Uh, the uh, That's the cast strength one, right? Yep. Yeah. These 12s are great. I remember like just even two years ago, you could get these for like 110. And now they're like 150 everywhere. They're tough to get your hands on. But I got this one um, from Binnie's in Chicago for like 100. Fifteen hundred twenty. That's like a great that. price. It's yeah, usually it's hard, to hard, hard, hard to get these things. And it's one forty here, believe it or not, in Maryland. Yeah, it's crazy prices. Yeah, I believe it. One thing I get off that. Do you tell me if you get cotton candy and bubble gum off off the nose and in the palate on that? Because to me, for some reason, I get always get cotton candy and bubble gum off that. <laughs> it's weird. I definitely get the bubble gum. Not the cotton candy note, not as much. You know, something I get a lot of cotton candy on is uh, Russell's Reserve. Maybe on the palate. Try it on, when you get to the palate. Tell me if you get yeah. any on the palate because that one's a very sweet, nice, peaty, sweet dram. There's got to be like PX or something involved with that at some point, but mm. I don't know. Yeah, that's I, a good question. Um, I definitely get bubble gum on the Laga 9. Yeah, that is a lot of bubble. That was the 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 that was the Game of Thrones one, right? Yeah. What'd you pick out there, Cody? I also have some twelve year olds. Ooh, nice! I cleaned mine out already. Unfortunately, I got an eighteen. Fishilla haven't opened up yet. That'll be good. That's for a special occasion down the road. <laughs> but the twelves, I do love the twelves. I've uh, I think mine was a. 2016 or 17, if I remember. Yeah, 2016, actually. It's the uh, 1816 and 2016 label. And uh, that 12, I, th I liked that a lot. That was really good. It was good as good as an Octomore, I think. Yeah, I've got the uh, 2014 one here. Four nice. I mean, if you get similar notes off that one, it's just an older version. Oh man, yeah. I get. I, I definitely get the bubblegum thing, which I might not have noticed before, and I would it might have mistaken for like a sweet fruit citrus thing. Uh, not so much the cotton candy, but okay. God, I was curious. <laughs> it's still damn good, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. DH Silve switching over to the Glen Scotia Double Cask. I think that the Glen Scotia Double Cask is a great pour. I also see that. Uh, there's a couple other folks pouring a couple of things here too. Damn. Stephen Connor, 1995 Imperial, 23 year old. Gordon mm -hmm. Glenn Elgin, 16. Damn. <laughs> Imperial, I have had one of their drams uh, when we were doing the distillery tour and trying a little bit of everything. Um, didn't run across it and it was okay, but the version I had, uh, I'm not sure. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a distillery dead bottle, but it was okay. It wasn't like blow your socks off great, but it was like a middle of the road type of, of, of dram. But hopefully the independents are a lot better. I'm sure they are. That's the thing with, with some of these things is you, you get a distillery version and you're kind of like, eh, it's okay. And then you try the, the independent version. It's like, wow, it's so much better. <laughs> yep. Yeah, for sure. Kalila is a classic example of that. Um, I like the Kalila 12 enough, but I've had the Kalila 11 Berry Brothers and Rudd cast strength, which was just like exponentially better in all wow. ways. I'm sure the cast strength helps a lot too. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, for sure. But it was also like almost the same price, man. The Glen the the Kalila 12 was like ah oh, fuck. I want to say upwards of 
it was like 65 bucks. This, this, uh, Barry Brothers and Road 11 that I got the cast rank, it was 57. I was like, what? Hey, Port- Cody, have you had, uh, have you had Puerto Sake before, Cody? And I think they're Kalila driven as well, aren't they? Yeah. As far as, I mean, from what I've heard, it's mostly always Kalila. I said, uh, do you know why they, they bought, I mean, I, I'm assuming that they're doing this for doing experimental bottlings of, in different like casks and whatnot. Is there a reason why you think they, they mask themselves with that name sometimes? Mask themselves with the port of Sake name versus using the Kalila name. I mean, I, I, I'm assuming the only reason they would do that is to do like experimental bottlings and stuff, but is there a re- another reason you could think of why they would do that? I mean, it's it's they, it's it's owned by a different company. It's not it's not Kalila releasing Kalila under Portis Gag. It's it's a dis, it's owned by a distributor. That's that's their brand. So Portis Gag basically goes to Kalila and says, "We want this cask. They'll get the they'll get the the barrel, or whatever, and they'll keep it for I guess a little longer. Or or what's the reasoning behind the reselling of it? I guess is what I'm asking. I, mean, I think they're it's just like any other independent bottler. But oh, okay. So th- I should I should think as Porta Sega is like Hunter Lang, basically. Yeah, I got you. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, that makes sense. That was confusing to me because they usually delve just in the Kalila area, and I was wondering why they would just. I wonder if they'll ever like go into Bunahaven and try to do a cask there or that kind of thing. If they're just going to stick with Kalila, I'm just wondering. Yeah, if they'll do I don't that. Know. I do like their stuff. I've had uh, their early stuff when they first started doing it. I liked it. It was just very Kalila esque, you know, with the, with the maritime notes and, and some of that. So and I was that more- citrus note too. You know, like I get a lot of that citrus off Kalila. That citrus tropical kind of note. I don't know. It's they they have such a different profile than a lot of the uh, you know the, the the big three on Isla. You know, Isla, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Huh. All right, gentlemen, I got to uh, wind up for the rest of my yeah. Um It's been good hanging out. Uh, Jerem, dude, great chatting with you, man. Raise a glass to you. Raise a glass to everybody in the chat. Everybody stay safe. Be well. Telix, I'll hit yeah. you up email, man. We, uh, since we've been doing this almost every Tuesday, we're going to we'll figure out a way to make this a, a thing we do. So. No, that sounds good. Yeah. I appreciate you guys stopping by and um... – yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, roll roll along with Gar. It's not a bad dream. I don't go into the history and the royal warrants and all that stuff, but um, hopefully, uh, it'll catch on enough to do an eighteen year. I mean, I know they have some Caden Heads bottles here and there. Uh, Cody, have you ever had a roll lot in the Gar before? I'm just curious. Um, I don't think I have. It's one that I would keep an eye out. I'm not saying that I would go and, and definitely the secondary market prices on this is crazy. Uh, but if you could find it for 50 to 55 for the 12 year old, it's, it's worth a look. It's actually above average on a 12 year old dram by far um, than what I've had, you know, versus like Glen Kinchy or some of those other uh, distillers that have like a bottom line 12 year old, like Cragamore or whatever. But uh, yeah. It's a shame they don't have anything older that's that's distillery version. They have that select reserve. The select reserve is like a two fifty. I think it's probably way overpriced. It's an NAS, so I would not go that route. But if they had, um, I know that Cadence has does a version of this. I'm in, I'm interested to see if anyone's had a version of the Cadence heads of the uh, Roll Lotnagar and see what you think about it. But definitely put a comment if you've had and if you liked it or not. If it's, if you think it's worth it. I think it would be a good deal. But I appreciate you stopping by and uh hopefully uh we'll uh get my shipment in before next week. I'm I'm it's gotta be soon, I would hope. I've been waiting since like uh April the eighth for it, so I'll have to call tomorrow and see where the hell it is. But uh we'll be doing the we'll be doing the, the Bunahaven uh the uh Ankladoc which is the uh, the travel retail, and we'll be doing the uh, Kalila 18 at some point. If I can't get those bottles before next week, then I'll pull out like a basic space side 12 or a, I don't know, I'll, I'll figure out something. But uh, hopefully we can keep the ball rolling with the shipments coming in. 
Anything you're looking forward to next week, Cody? No. I mean, about a month ago, I, was, I bought like a eight bottles or something. Spent a bunch. But uh, right now, money's a little tight. My wife's working two days a week. so cause, uh, Makes yeah. a big difference, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the, that's the, the hard thing. Same kind of boat here with as far as the extra work is concerned. But... I'm as thankful I can still work and, and still get a paycheck coming in. Cause man, it's, it's rough for a lot of people out there. Yeah. But yeah, I'm lucky. I'm, I'm extremely busy, but my wife's company furloughed a bunch of people and she's working two days a week. So I'm like you, thankfully I'm, I'm actually working double probably what I usually do. Um, but I'm not complaining by any means, but it's funny how some people are like double and some people are like nothing, you know, middle of the road. And some people are like looking for anything they can get their hands on. So it's kind of crazy yeah. how that works, but crazy times. hopefully it gets better before it gets any worse. That's for damn sure. I, I thoroughly think we have been through the thick of the weeds, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just a matter of hopefully three or four months. I'm, I'm hoping that that's all it takes to get through this insanity where everything's back to somewhat normal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's looking pretty good in this area because we sheltered in place pretty early. So, I wish everybody did. Cause I, I was March 9th was my last day being outside of the of the of the casa, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and March 9th mm-hmm. is a long time ago. It's like we're going almost two months here in uh, the next month. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I've gone to Walgreens to pick up a prescription, but that's about it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I would kill for a for a McDonald's cheeseburger right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> instead we, as that sounds, uh, we'll go out and run errands and stuff or get food. That's not a problem. We live in a small little town, so it's not crazy or anything. But no, I hear you. Any, anything that you've heard coming that's uh, interesting to you, or anything that you're looking to uh, get into uh, soon that you haven't like messed with recently, or? Any bottles that you have that you haven't opened yet that you're looking forward to opening? Well, I was saying in the chat because DH Silva was giving me some shit for not having those Buna Havens open. Um, but I'll probably open one, if not both of them, in a couple weeks when I turn 30. So. Oh, congratulations, man. Thank you. You're making me feel old, though, man. <laughs> I would kill to I'm go sorry. back. It's not on purpose. <laughs> no, I understand. I would kill to go back to 30. Uh, you're lucky. You're very lucky because starting the scotch now at 30, I wish I did because by now I'd, I'd have a shitload of, of information and experience and all that. So you're really lucky when it comes to that, you know, experience, I'd say. <laughs> I am, yeah. But we'll have to keep it. Uh, yeah, if you stop by next Tuesday, if you can, I'll be doing. Uh, if I can't get one of those two bottles, which I hope to God I can before next week, I'll definitely pull out something of the old archives. I have a lot that's still open on the side that uh, I could dive into if necessary. Um, I wish that that Grooves was a little better uh, compared to the uh, CR release, but it is what it is. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Did you, happy to join next week. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> not here. Yet. Did you like the the grooves uh, committee versus the LR? The limited a lot different, or did you remember the differences between the two? Because I know it's a huge difference between the two for me at least. You know, I don't know if I had the committee release one of it. I don't think I did. Oh, okay. If you if you could find it, I would definitely. Give that a go. I would skip the LR for anybody out there that hasn't like bought one. If you could find the committee release, I would definitely shoot toward that. I know it's a little bit more, but it is night and day difference quality to me at least. We're talking like 4.25, 4.5 on the committee release of the Grooves versus this one. I'll do a review of it proper, but I'm leaning towards like a 3.5, 3.75 on the limited. That's how different it is. Sadly. Yeah, I kind of stopped buying the the yearly art bags. I, the last one I got was Kelpie, which you can kind of see over there. Yeah, um, it, did, it but, didn't didn't capture you. I take it. Um, I mean, I, I I usually get to taste them beforehand, like right when they come out, and I mean they're fine, but they haven't wowed me. So I'm like, I've tasted it 
I don't need to buy a bottle, you know. So. No, I hear you. And that's the thing. They're definitely more readily available than a lot of things that you could save your money and spend something on like a 30 year version of something like, yeah. like the Budahaven, for example, is a good, yeah. like a, I mean, uh, those were pricey. They're around 300, 350 a piece, but for a 30 year old Budahaven, that's pretty damn good. So, and old particular is pretty good with their independent bottlings from what I hear. They're, they're yeah. consistently decent, like a cadence heads or something like that. I would say. Yeah. yeah I've probably got 10 or so, bottles from old, old particular so oh wow okay. besides old particular do you like adelphi a lot um i've not had anything from them i don't oh, okay. see, you don't see them around here very often um i, did I think buy it's the coast thing probably I did buy one just the other day so i have i own one and that's only one I think I'll be happy with it because when I ask people a lot about the independent bottlings, what they like, what's what they versus they don't, that's one that actually does come up as being one of the better options. So I think it'll be like, what is it? Yeah. So, I mean, I always hear great things about them. I just can't find them around here, which is too bad. Uh, so this is a 21 year old Glengarry bottled at 58.6%. Uh, oh my goodness gracious. Sherry, Sherry cask. Oh, that looks lovely, Glengarry. I've had their twelve, and it was a good. It was a good base, you know, a good base uh, from what I've, I gathered from it. Uh, I would love to try something like that. So that's a. I'm, I'm sure that's going to be a really good one to open up at some point. <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. I think you'll. I think you'll like it. Adolfi, I've heard good things about Caden's Head, Old Particular, Douglas Sling, of course. Um, trying to think of some. Uh, other independents that were really, really good on the very, very good black adder. Do you, do you like any of their stuff? I've had a couple and yeah, they're really good. Any other ones that you, that, that you gravitate towards versus other ones before, you know, you would throw the money down. Uh, as far as independent. Yeah. Um, Exclusive malts is another like, one. That's pretty uh, good usually. Yeah, I've got one or two of those. Those are good. I have a Dufftown um, bottling that's cash strength, uh, matured in red wine barriques or something. Oh, wow. Uh, those are really good. good. But I also like a Signatory. 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 Thing. That's the other one. I was missing that one. I'm glad you mentioned that because I, for, I forget them. I need to pick up something. The only bad thing about Signatory locally here is that whenever I find one, it's usually a Kalila, which, I mean, is run of the mill. You can find those everywhere. Yeah. I'm hoping that Signatory uh, will release some locally to Maryland ones that are a little bit different as far as the distilleries are concerned, but I'm not going to complain. <laughs> yeah. I'll take what I can get. Well, thanks so much for stopping by, everybody. I really appreciate it. I'm going to have to, unfortunately, call it a day because I have to work tomorrow, which is sad. But um, definitely come back by, Cody, if you can. Um, anytime, you're welcome to uh, join the stream. It's just like Malt. And yeah. uh, shoot the breeze, you know, over some drams. And uh, hopefully, Roll of Nagar will get an eight, a 15 at a at minimum. 15 would be awesome. 18 would be even preferable. Um, or a cast strength version of their whiskey would be great because the 12 is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, it's actually pretty good. 3.5 out of five on a 12. I think it's a pretty good rating. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So definitely above average compared to other 12s. Um, and I'll be doing some other ones. Uh, might hit a space side 12, um, which is the space side distillery, not very well known, but uh, might hit that just as a comparison. <laughs> The Tenenic uh, 10 Flora and Fauna bottle we might hit just as a comparison. It's not going to rate very high, but we'll dive into what's great about it, what's not great about it, and uh, maybe some uh, – I think – have you ever had the um, the Tenenic uh, 17 by chance? I know DHS has had it. Have you had that one by chance, Cody? Never had anything from them. Oh, okay. This one that uh, he was – I remember – he was completely let down by the uh, 17 year old version of it. I haven't had it yet. It's the only other um, distillery bottle they offer. So hopefully um, I can either find it for a reasonable price or uh, get a sample or something just to get my hands and see what it's like. Cause the 10 was, was not 
that great even for the floor and final bottle but i'm hoping that some of their older stuff would be better but he's the only one i have to base anything off of and since he's the new swami it's kind of tough to gauge <laughs> <laughs> no offense dh says i'm just messing with you man i must mess with you i like critics because that's what you know it's all about that 17 was a one-off yeah it's uh it's pretty bad from what i've heard though uh, and that's kind of scary because that that thing is like still 150 200 minimum from what i remember but i'll have to wow. look and see if there's a better price yeah so, so that's what it's all about is trying to find you know what's good and what's not so good about some of these off distilleries that's what i like doing on the side trying yep. to figure out you know what's what with some of them so Thanks so much for stopping by, guys. I appreciate it, and I'll see you hopefully soon. If uh, maybe if I can organize something, I'll let Cody and uh, Malt know beforehand next Tuesday. But if we can't do it before next Tuesday, we'll definitely see you there, 9 p.m. Central. I'm sorry, Eastern time. And what what time is it there in California? Uh, right now it's eight. You're lucky, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had that much time left. Thanks so much, Lanchava. See you.